In the next few videos, we're going to cover operant conditioning. This video is going to start by looking at reinforcement. So first, you should be able to associate the name B.F. Skinner with operant conditioning. B.F. Skinner was a behavioral psychologist and is well known for his work on operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is a learning based on the consequence of behavior. This is different from classical conditioning, where the behavior of the animal is not important. In classical conditioning, animals simply learn to associate a condition or neutral stimulus with an unconditioned stimulus. In operant conditioning, we're looking at modifying an animal's behavior, either to strengthen or weaken the frequency of that behavior. We're gonna start here by looking at reinforcement. With reinforcement, we use reinforcers. These are stimuli that strengthen or increase the frequency of a behavior. And there are several types of reinforcement. First, we have positive reinforcement. In positive reinforcement, a positive stimulus is added after the behavior. An example of this is giving a student a cookie for getting a good grade on an exam. So the behavior here is getting a good grade on an exam. We want to increase the frequency of this behavior, and we can do this by giving the child a positive stimulus, a cookie for getting a good grade. Next, we have negative reinforcement. With negative reinforcement, we are still trying to increase the frequency of the behavior, but we're going to do this by removing a negative stimulus. So for example, if a child gets a good grade, you can reward that child by telling him or her that they do not have to do their chores. So the chores here is a negative stimulus, and you remove it when the student performs the desired behavior, getting a good grade on an exam. Now, one thing I wanna emphasize here is that for both positive and negative reinforcement, we are trying to strengthen or increase the frequency of the behavior. The difference between positive and negative reinforcement is that positive reinforcement involves adding something, whereas negative reinforcement involves removing something. This is good to keep in mind because in subsequent videos, we're going to look at positive and negative punishment, and the terms positive and negative mean the same thing there, adding or removing something. Okay, so next we have primary reinforcement. Here, an unconditioned stimulus is used as the reinforcer. So in our example where we gave the student a cookie for getting a good grade on an exam, that's an example of an unconditioned stimulus because the cookie in itself is positive, right? When the student eats the cookie, that produces natural happiness, right? The student is automatically happy. This is different from secondary or conditional reinforcement where a conditioned stimulus is used as the reinforcer. Here, the terms unconditioned and conditioned are the same as what we saw with classical conditioning. Unconditioned is innate. So that means a cookie is going to taste good no matter what for the student. However, the conditioned stimulus is looking at a neutral stimulus that normally doesn't mean anything, but because of conditioning does have meaning. An example of this is when the student gets a good grade, you reward the student with money. Money can just be paper or coins and by itself, Paper and coins aren't rewarding, but what is rewarding is that this conditioned stimulus, the money or the paper and coins can be used to purchase unconditioned stimuli. So the student can use the money to go buy a cookie. Okay, so that's the difference between primary and secondary reinforcement, whether the reinforcement is unconditioned or it is conditioned. 